I have my coffee made and I thought that today would be a good day to finally vlog and answer some questions that some people had on my Instagram about living here in Italy. Um, <clears throat> I have the questions all right here and forgive my updo I guess. It's spring break, okay? My kids are both right there. They're gonna be watching Mickey Mouse until I get this done because if not, it will probably never get done. Just coffee made and it's heavenly. So good. I, I needed a sip, okay. So welcome back. About three months now, I think, right? January, February, March. It's almost April. So we've been here about three months, going on four months, April. So it's about that time. I was supposed to do one after the first month of living here, but I'm glad that I didn't because it would have truly been super negative, I guess. I was not in the right mind space to film that. Anyway, okay, so the first question that I got was, not. It, it's more like a what is it like negative and positive type thing. So. As far as negatives, it's pretty much when you just first get here, um, it's just a lot. So it's a lot of new different things. You have to figure out a lot. So first of all, when you first get here, you obviously don't have a vehicle because you either are waiting for yours that you shipped or you have to get a beater. So for us, our experience, we did not ship a vehicle because we had a humongous truck and there was no way we were gonna ship that here. So we had to find a beater. And then we were in the hotel for about six weeks. I think it was almost seven weeks, just about seven weeks. And we found our housing at the six week mark and then it took a week to move in and stuff. So the weight will all depend on you and how picky you are because a lot of people are like, I had to be in the hotel for three months, but that's because you're being picky. So. It, it all depends on you and how you pick your housing. We knew what we wanted. Um, the, you know, the first place that we saw, we pretty much were like, let's just do it. And then we moved in. But um, it's just a lot. I'm sorry if I sound congested. The allergy things here, that's another thing. Like, they say that the air quality here is poor. I don't know about the air quality, but I know that lately there's been like cherry blossom trees blooming. And it's been making my nose like... I sound like I can't breathe and um, apparently uh, what is it called like Sudafed Sudafedrin is like illegal here like they don't sell Sudafedrin here or something like that so if you're someone like me that needs like Mucinex D or like Allegra D you can't get that here um, but yeah uh, what's another thing about living here so driving let's talk about driving because i'm someone who will never drive here i'm sorry i know it sounds like well you ain't gonna drive no i will never drive here i'm from new york city i know how to ride a bus i figured out the bus system in like one day and i'm okay with riding the bus if i need to go somewhere far um we have not ridden the tr we haven't ridden the train yet so i have no experience with that but i rode the train in germany so it can't be that hard. Um, I think that a lot of people here are mostly intimidated by the language barrier. But for me, I have, I feel like I've been very fortunate that no matter where I go, there's always one person who speaks at least a little English that we can try to figure out what we need or what, you know, how to figure out the situation that we're in. So, yeah. As far as the positives, there's a lot of positives. Um, oh wait, I didn't finish with all the negatives. So my biggest thing about moving here that I still do not like besides the, the driving, which is not that big a deal because I don't go anywhere and where I live, I'll get to that. But like where I live, I don't need to drive. And the, but the biggest thing is that there's no emergency room on the base. There's no like actual hospital on the base here it's very strange so there's a clinic and in the clinic you know you have your typical um you know checkup places and stuff it's like a regular clinic they have a dental clinic they have behavioral health 
but there's no emergency room in there and there's no labor and delivery. There's none of that. So if you are pregnant or get pregnant while you're here, you have to go to the Italian hospitals. If you have any kind of emergency that you need to go to the emergency room, you have to go to, I think it's called San Bartolo. And <clears throat> from what I hear, the healthcare here in Italy is free, so you should not expect much. So we are trying to avoid the emergency room as much as possible. And <clears throat> if you have small kids like I do, what I suggest is that if they are not feeling well or, all right, if it's like sickness, like my son was not feeling well the other day, we kind of like just um, did what we can for the night or did what we could for the night. And then the next morning I called the acute care at the clinic on the base. So, you know, we just try to avoid the emergency room because I don't, I don't want to see what it's like. I hate emergency rooms in general. So yeah, that's the only thing. There are, it's not, it's still not that bad, but like when I first got here, I was like, what the fuck? There's no emergency room. Like why would they send people with kids here? In my honest opinion, I really believe that Vicenza, like Ederly, Delden <clears throat> bases are meant for single soldiers or couples with no kids. That's just me because I don't know. I, I will probably always believe that. And I know families thrive here. That's awesome for you if you thrive here. But like, that's just my opinion. That's my experience. That's my, how I feel about it. Um, people are going to be watching all of my videos like, this girl seems so negative. You asked for the negative things and that's it. I swear, that's all it. The driving is crazy here. Um, there's no emergency room. And it takes a while to get in housing. And that's, I think that's pretty much it. It's not even that negative. It's just the reality of it. <clears throat> Some people want to go around in circles and make it seem like living in Italy is way better than anything else. But, like, it is what it is. We get shipped here and you have got to learn to deal with it in any way. So, now on to the positives. So, for me, the positive started when we moved to where we live so uh, we live we live in Camisano and I am obsessed with where we live because one there's like three four there's like four different markets like actual shopping markets that I can walk to so there's like the Aliper there's Pre Pre is kind of like um Aldi Aliper is kind of like Publix. I, I, I get a Publix feel, but like a high, a, a more elevated Publix. And then there's Eurospar, and then there's like a D Pilly or something like that. I haven't been to eat any of those stores yet, but they're supposed to be like a discount type store. I haven't been in there, but maybe I will and I'll vlog it. But yeah, those are the other stores that are all around me. Um, <clears throat> the closest ones though are Pre and Aliper and those are the, my favorite anyway. And then like directly out from my house, there are, um, two vegetable and like, like produce little stores. You can go and grab bread there. You can grab, um, fruits and vegetables. It's a produce store. And then like where I live is kind of like a little mini downtown. So like there's a cap uh, pizzeria like right down the street. I can see it from my window. There's a cafe bar. There's multiple ones around here. There's Vaniglio, which is the gelato shop. So like everywhere, <clears throat> everywhere I walk, there's something. There's always something to do here. So that's, there's a lot of positives about that. And then I haven't like tried to ride the bus from here to anywhere else yet, but I'm sure that when my daughter goes to school, I will. I don't really want to go try to go places by myself with my daughter, if that makes sense, because I don't want to get lost somewhere and then I have my daughter with me. That's that wouldn't be good. So as far as like exploring or anything like that, I don't plan on doing that alone. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of things to do here. Like, as you can see, we go, I go thrifting with my friend. Um, we check out the thrift stores, like kind of like antique stores. Um, we try to check out all the stores that sell like clothes and stuff. Palladio Mall. 
Um, and then of course you can travel. We personally have not traveled yet because our car won't go that far. And um, people keep forgetting that like we live here. So this is not a vacation for us. And I think that when people say, oh, or when people hear, oh, you live in Italy, they're automatically thinking like, we're gonna be going to visit all these places. And that's not, my husband has to work. Like he works here, we live here. My kids go to school. We're not gonna be just going around like, this is not a vacation, okay guys? So just keep that in mind for all your friends that move overseas, like it's not a vacation. But um, it is beautiful here. And um, I haven't really had experience with anyone being rude. I feel, I'm trying to think if I have or if I haven't, but I don't, I don't think I've had any experiences. I've had a lot of looks, <clears throat> but from my understanding, people will look at me because I'm out with my daughter without a, my husband. And I, th I guess I don't I haven't figured out that's a no-no or not. Someone said that it is. Like, people usually don't go out without their husbands, um, like, out and about. I don't know. And then I know that when I'm with my husband, I get a lot of looks because of my body type. At least that's what he thinks is because of my body type. Because women here are either very large or very, very, very small. And I'm kind of like in between where I'm like small here, but then humongous down there, you know what I mean? So, so another question that I had was how is the espresso here and is it really strong? Um, if you go to Starbucks and you order coffee, they use espresso. Uh, you probably just don't realize because you're not ordering espresso, you're ordering a frappe but they're using espresso in the frappe. So I'm pretty sure you've had espresso before. <clears throat> Most people have had espresso before. Now, I haven't been to a cafe yet, so I haven't tried their espresso. Like my coffee right now is the Starbucks cold brew. And <clears throat> even before I got this cold brew, I was using the Kona coffee that I brought with me from the States because Kona coffee is my favorite. But yeah, I haven't had any coffee here because it's not my thing. Like, I'm not going to go and be like, can I have an espresso? Like, I'm not going to just order espresso. Like, I want iced coffee. Give me my iced coffee. It's just so good and it gets so hot here. How do they not have iced coffee? Anyway, um, at the hotel... They do have espresso machines and stuff like that. So what I would do is that I would get shots of espresso because it's unlimited. You can get as many as you want while you're at the hotel. So I would get shots of espresso and put it in my, I had like a little like black Yeti thing. And then I would go to the ice machine and put ice. And then I had my own creamer in the room. So I would still be making my own iced coffees, but like, I'm used to espresso. I would order espresso at Starbucks. Um, I don't feel like there's no difference here. I think you would have to be like a super coffee connoisseur to like sip. I don't know. I don't know. It works for me. Coffee, as long as it's caffeinated, I'll drink it pretty much. <clears throat> I don't know the difference of taste and flavor and stuff. But um, I do know that they don't sweeten their things here much. So like if you, I think I've, I had like a macchiato one time and it was literally just milk and coffee um, and same thing with their cappuccino. Um, I think my favorite thing that I had at the hotel was the ginseng cappuccino. It was so good. It was so good, especially like in the evening, super good, which I think is not correct to do, but. The thing that I'm gonna go over is like the most um, common asked questions in the Facebook pages for here because there are a lot of the same questions asked every day and I feel like they're asked because they want actual personal experiences. So I'm just gonna say my personal experience and from my knowledge, how to answer those questions. So I know the number one thing is housing. So <clears throat> when you first get here, um, you go to the hotel obviously and I know that when we got here, I was not allowed to go with my husband to the briefings because of COVID. 
So he would go to the briefings um, for housing and he came back and related all the information to me. And pretty much there are two choices, I believe, um, for housing. So there's the government housing, <clears throat> which is the most similar to like living on base, living on post, um, where, you know, you choose your housing and then it gets taken out of your paycheck just like you would living on base and then the other is um like renting um how do you explain that the non-government housing thing where you just rent a house from whatever so um let, i'm gonna give you a little inside thing so for us they were trying to not they were okay when we got here they tried to tell us there's no government housing available so that's a big fat lie because if you have it, such a large amount of people incoming and going out, I know you have government housing available. So government housing, for those who did not know, um, coming in, government housing is pretty much like living on post as far as like, um, like utilities. You don't have to worry about utilities. It's all covered. And then, like, in your rent. So, like, let's say your rent number is 1,700 euros. Then they will take all that out of your paycheck. And you it's, like, one less thing you have to worry about with government housing. Um, and then, as you can see, like, um, a lot of our things kind of looks like a regular Americanized type of housing. As far as, like, our fridge is a normal American size. Our stove is a normal American size. Um, what else? Uh, we have the laundry and what is it called? The laundry machine, the dryer, stuff like that. Like it's all in here. And then downstairs we have garage and we have two storage rooms downstairs. So like whatever didn't fit up here, we put downstairs in our storage rooms and then we have the garage as well. So, um, there's all kinds of different options for government housing, government lease housing. Uh, it, I think it just depends on the area. So if government housing is what you want, I'm going to be a little tip from, uh, from me. If government housing is what you want, make sure your husband or your spouse or whoever it is that goes to the housing briefings or to housing itself, make sure they fight for that because it is... You were set to live here. It is your right to live where you want to live. So if they try to BS you and tell you there's no government housing, you go every day and annoy the shit out of them. That's what my husband did. He went every day and annoy the shit out of them and tell you they were like, okay, we got one. And then we saw and we were like, it's exactly everything we want. It's kind of small compared to our last house that we lived at, but it's Italy. So a lot of places are going to be kind of small, but it just depends where you live. So I've seen um, a government housing that was like a townhome and it was a lot bigger, but it's just pretty much what's available when you get here. So yeah, um, as far as the non-government housing process, I know that they would tell us to look every day on homes.mil and you can pretty much like scroll and see like the pictures of the housing and from what other people tell me don't don't like go based off the pictures because whoever takes the pictures takes terrible pictures but like when we moved here none of those houses were in our price range and some of them were just not like compatible for the things that we needed for our family and also for my kids so um, we definitely didn't want to go with homes.mil and then this also immobiliere, which I know that um, some of my some of the people who were in the hotel with me they found their house on there so that's a different process I don't know that process for me there was already enough going on with moving here I just wanted something where I don't have to think about it I can call up maintenance at any time and be like hey my light bulb is out or hey my stove's not working or hey and they'll come like the next day you know um, one thing that I do want to mention though is that 
for any housing that you get, government or not government or however, make sure it has shutters and make sure that it has a good heating and like conditioning thing because it gets super hot in the summer. I haven't been here in the summer yet, but it's already getting hot and it's spring. So make sure that the air conditioners, at least there's one unit or something in your place and make sure that for the winter, you have like heating of some sorts and the shutters, shutters are for protection. So when you see me like going like that in the morning, I'm opening the shutters and then at night we close them because you don't want anybody to break in to your place. I mean, we live on the top floor in an apartment building. So I highly doubt there's an Italian Spider-Man trying to break into our house. So yeah, but that is pretty much it about housing. Um, a few other things that I want to mention about uh, things that you should do before coming here. So if you, if you just received orders for Italy, um, I highly suggest that first you make sure that you and your children's names are on them because uh, when my husband first got orders for Italy, we were not on them, which means that if we didn't get amended orders, we probably wouldn't be here right now. He would be here by himself and that would have been super depressing. But just make sure that your spouse, like whoever is the sponsor, make sure that you check the orders and make sure that you are on the orders as well and your children. Hey, Silencio Bruno. Make sure that you and your kids are on the orders. And then um, another thing is once you have the orders with you, with all of your names on them, get the hotel booked at Ederly Inn. You need to do that. So email. If anybody needs any help finding the emails or anything like that, just send me um, like a DM in uh, Instagram. And I will give you all the information through there if you need it. But I have the emails to email to book your hotel at Ederly Inn. And then you want to make sure you get a P.O. box. And I have the email for that as well. Make sure you get a P.O. box so you can start switching your, like sending your mail here. And then what else? Um, and then also start the process for your passport and all that stuff. So that you can get your tickets booked fast because I feel like that was the hardest thing for us was um, getting the amended orders because my kids are in the EFMP. So just for anybody to have a smoother experience than I did, make sure you get your physicals done. So orders, amended orders, physicals, and then passport, visas, SATO, Sado to book your tickets and then make sure you book your hotel and change your P.O. box. All of that. And you should be, it should be way smoother for you. Yes, I think that's it. Also, another random question that gets asked is, are you allowed to pack your seasonings and stuff? Girl, yes. Pack your seasonings, make sure that they're sealed. And um, I sealed mine with like tape around each whatever it was. Some of them were not open because I would buy like I bought like bulk from Sam's. Um, yeah, so like what if it was completely sealed and unopened? I put them in those clear containers. I'm gonna show you guys. Hold on, let me let me show. So gloomy outside, but um, so these containers that I have, you like the OXO whatever, they just pop open like that. And I pretty much sealed my seasonings and put them all in here. I, ha I had like a lot. Like I cleaned them all out, emptied them all out, and I stuck my seasonings in them. And the... Whoo, I cleaned all of those out. I taped my seasonings, the ones that were open, and the ones that were not open and sealed. I just stuck them in there. Stuck them all in there. And <clears throat> the household goods will pack them for you as long as they're all sealed and done properly. Oh, canned goods. You are allowed to ship canned goods. So like if you have a ton of canned goods and you don't want to, you want to, they can pack that for you. So pantry items like that. I also have like um, dried milk and stuff like that for baking. They were able to pack that. So like, you know, like just. You don't have to waste your things or like throw them away or anything like that. You can pack those, but yeah.
So I think that I rambled on enough today, but if you have any other questions, my hair is so distracting, I'm so sorry. But if you have any other questions, feel free to hit me up on Instagram or just comment below, I guess, if you need to. If it's something that I can't answer or if it's like a long answer, I'll probably just, I don't know, make another video about it. But uh, yeah, until next time, thank you for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, share if you have people PCSing to Italy. I know there's a million and one um, Facebook groups out there with all kinds of people probably PCSing here soon. So make sure to share, okay? Thank you for watching. Until next time, bye-bye.